So more and more, I do believe that nature-based solutions and conservation is not only a matter of people being enthusiastic ethically and morally about uh, preservations of uh, species, but also of the preservation of humanity itself. And um, it appears to be easy to, to talk about this, to mention this. It, it appears to be really straightforward reality. But to become that uh, policies and to make that happen and to enforce that in reality, it's, uh, it's completely different. It's very difficult to make that happen. And to share that with policymakers and also with uh, businesses to be part of this is one of the great challenges. Uh, this adds up not only with the reality of climate change and the need to decarbonize the whole economy in the world, now with COVID-19, uh, it presents also a great challenge. I do believe that if we want to build back better, we don't have to look back to, to, to after the pandemic to be as a planet as we were on January 2020. We need to look forward to a whole new reality coming out of the, of the pandemic in terms of nature-based solutions, in terms of our relation with uh, nature and biodiversity and in how business works along with this. As I uh, ending with what I start, nature, uh, biodiversity, it's becoming more and more a scarce resource. And that's why it's becoming more and more uh, valuable for us as humans. In a moral way, in a uh, economic way, and in a way to preserve humanity throughout time. To take the topic of biodiversity and nature loss uh, to the boardroom discussions and make it more relevant to uh, business CEOs, heads of state and government, and ministers of economy and finance, the World Economic Forum started this initiative of New Nature Economy Report series about a year ago. In January of this year, uh, we released the first of this uh, report series, which really looked at what are the risks which are material to businesses. Through the framework of risks, it identified that half of the world's GDP, $44 trillion, is moderately or highly dependent on nature loss. Moving from risks to opportunities, we are also looking out today in a very unprecedented environment as countries and companies both are planning for a post-COVID recovery. The second report, Future of Nature and Business, identifies that a nature positive pathway can indeed create $10 trillion of business value as well as create 395 million jobs by 2030. Now, to bring this uh, to reality, we need to be able to tra uh, have systemic transitions across three socioeconomic systems. And these are first, food, land and ocean use. Second, infrastructure and the built environment. And third, extractives and energy. So just allow me to give you two examples to make it a bit more real beyond just the numbers and macro statistics. I would like to take the example of agriculture which um, employs about 40% uh, of, of workforce globally, as well as contributes about 12% of the global GDP. However, it is also one of the biggest contributors of uh, pollution in water, as well as our land resources. So the transition that we talk about in the report is on regenerative agriculture. And moving towards a regenerative agriculture, we can uh, increase the biodiversity in soil. I think I'll be joined um, as a fellow panelist uh, by Sven Tore, who in the Champions for Nature community has been talking about looking at soil as an asset class. So by shifting towards a regenerative agriculture, as well as shifting towards a nature positive economic pathway, we can create more jobs as well as look at uh, soil as, uh, as an asset rather than just something that we drill and move on. A second example um, is in the urbanization space, something that will ring true to all of us today in this COVID space. The way we have built our cities and the urban environments means there is a huge amount of land as well as office spaces which are simply kept vacant or underutilized. Our research shows that 
this amount of land is equivalent to the size of Switzerland, which lays vacant in office spaces, parking lots, etc. So if going forward, we can actually create more compact environments, provide spare nature so that uh, animals and wildlife can take care of themselves in their own environment. So both like protect, restore and sustainably manage our land, we can move towards a scenario which will create both jobs, economic opportunities and uh, good outcomes for the environment. So those are just some ideas for us um, and that we have discussed in the report. Having talked about why we should invest in the new nature economy, let me move a little towards the how we can do this. The report also identifies that to capture the $10 trillion of business opportunities, we need to invest about $2.7 trillion. While this number may seem quite huge, it pales in comparison if you look at the, U the stimulus program which was announced by the US government in just the month of March of March 2020, and that was $2.7 trillion. So if anything, COVID has shown us that we as humanity are capable of taking drastic changes. What is required is a decisive political will and leadership, as well as business innovation and acumen.